Uh, I guess I just want to begin, you know, obviously, by you know talking about uh, the first few months that you've been in this position. I, I know it's it's a return for you in many ways, but uh, considering what what uh, you kind of had to walk into, I know it, it was dr dramatically different. Uh, how have the last few months been for you in this uh, role again? Well, it's kind of like riding a bike. Um, the vernacular comes back. Everything that was in the way back of your mind comes forward again and you you can really start picking it up pretty quickly again so uh that's kind of what happened so that was a, a good thing for you though obviously it's it's much different this go around because we've never seen numbers like this with people filing for unemployment uh, with with the challenges of, of uia having to keep up with the technology and the demand so in that sense i would imagine for you it's got to feel uh, you know uh, overwhelming in a sense just because you're serving so many different people Actually, when I came in the first time, it is when um, the branch offices closed and we went to a call center system that was not prepared to take the influx of calls at that time. And um, we were heading into the recession. So um, it's on a bigger scale. I mean, you're standing under Niagara Falls with a, a fire hose in your mouth with this one in a pandemic, but that one we were standing under Tequamanon Falls and it was raining really hard at the same time. So I think that um, although different, um, they have a lot of similarities in terms of the things that we had to do to um, weather everything that was happening. A plus for your analogies there, that was very good. <laughs> Um, I will tell you, though, being a reporter who covers consumer issues and who deals with the bulk of the emails and the calls from people who are frustrated, I am still every day getting so many calls and emails from people who are having problems with the system. What is being done to make changes moving forward to improve it so those people don't have those glitches anymore? Um, well, we every day we are doing updates to the system. Every day we are trying to make things easier. Um, we have a process that we're working on right now that is trying to make our um, documents that we send out easier for people to understand. Uh, so they, they don't feel like they're trying to guess in terms of the answer that they think they have to provide. Uh, sometimes I think people overthink what we're asking them to do. Um, but, um, you know, so every day we are working to try to make it an easier process while still having a huge uh, caseload. But it's still very clear and it's still very evident that a lot of people are having problems with the system. So uh, what responsibility does UIA take for it and say, you know what, we're, we're doing what we can, but we're not, we're not making the mark here. Well, um, you know, if somebody's having a problem, they should be calling in. Last week um, on Monday, which is obviously our biggest call volume day, uh, we uh, answered 70% of the calls. And by Friday, we were answering about 92% of the calls. So our call volume has dropped. So if people are having problems, this is an opportunity for them to call in and talk to somebody um, who should be able to help answer their questions. We have done over 350,000 appointments since we uh, started the appointment process last October. We are working to add a video component to that. So when people um, make their appointment, they can choose to have a video appointment so they can say, look at my document and we can look at it um, with them uh, right there on the screen. Uh, so we're hoping to have that ready to go by the end of the month when we turn work search on. Um, so we have added some um, some options for people uh, so that we can uh, spend more time talking to them about what their issue is. Um, we have also completed our, our um, BPR backlog. So all of the people who were in that backlog um, have received a notice they're either being paid or they were denied. And if they were denied, they have the option of protesting. And so we've notified them of how to go about protesting. So, um, you know, there's, there's not a lot of people who shouldn't have heard from us in terms of their actual claim. Now they may not like the answer that they got and that's the denial process and they have the opportunity to protest and then they can, uh, we will, you know, look at that and can make either a redetermination. And if they don't like the answer on that time, they have other ways to go through that process to an administrative law judge, to the UIAC. So um, they have options available to them if they are unhappy with their answer. And while 70% getting through on a Monday is better than you were at a year ago. And no, it's phenomenal. <laughs> and 90% on a Friday. 
Do you have any idea what the hold times are for that, for a person to actually get through? Um, last week, it was about six minutes, six to seven minutes. Okay. And, and that's a, a dramatic change. So how did you get to that point? Was that hiring more people? Because I know that in hiring more people, there were some problems with that also. Um, well, we do have more people. Um, and so, I mean, that's always a training process. Um, but as we've, you know, they've been trained, they should be able to answer most of the questions that people have. Um, they can also um, ask us questions in the chat uh, feature. Uh, so they can ask us uh, through um, our chat bot and they can an ask and have questions answered that way too, if they have a more complicated question. Identity theft has been a huge and unfortunately growing problem. It doesn't seem like it's getting any better. It's affecting people all across the state. What can be done right now to try to help resolve that situation, if there's anything that can be done? Well, we have um, a significant number of uh, fraud uh, indicators in our system that will stop a lot of it. When we had that big push um, over Easter weekend, we uh, were able to stop all of that fraud. Uh, from happening. And so that was 120,000 cases that came in over a six day period. Uh, and we were able to stop all of those through our fraud manager system. And so we were able to detect those. We have systems in place where we look at claims that come in on a daily basis that seem to be odd for some reason, um, based on a set of criteria that we have in place. And then we have staff who look at those to determine if there's something we need to be looking at uh, in those. So um, we have really ramped up our fraud detection uh, as have every state because it isn't just Michigan that's being impacted. All states have been impacted by this. I know there are not as many offices uh, as the Secretary of State throughout the state, for example, but why do UIA offices remain closed to the public right now? Well, um, you know, we've only hit the first marker in the governor's vaccine program. And yeah, we, but let's be real. We will, let's be real. We will feel more comfortable. The Secretary, of, the Secretary of State's been open for months now. So it really, it, we can't use the vaccine excuse. That doesn't work because all courts are open. Secretary of State is open. UIA is closed and, and it, it doesn't it doesn't seem to make sense. Um, well, by appointment works for the Secretary of State's office because they have an 186 um, offices. We have 12. Half of those offices only have one person in them. And if that person isn't available, there is not another person to um, to take their place. And um, you know, we, we need to make sure that our staff feel comfortable uh, going back into those settings. We are looking at um, and preparing for opening those offices. We just don't have a date for when that's going to happen yet. But it's not about, let's just be honest about something. It's not about the vaccines and about where we are in terms of the state. It's about other issues. It's about not having staff for those offices or security because I believe that there have been security concerns regarding UIA staff. So but putting the blame and saying that it's on, on vaccines doesn't really seem to fly. When you have every other government office in the state of Michigan open. Every other government office isn't open and we have to look at it from the perspective of UI and how we can manage the staff that we have to do the work that we have to do. And like I said, we are looking at and working toward opening our local offices, uh, but we're not there yet. Do you have an idea on a timeline? We do not. Okay. Would you say it's going to happen this year? Yes, I have, okay. you know, yes. That, that gives me a whole lot of time since we're only in May. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, and I get, I understand your point with, with the Secretary of State and being able to make an uh, appointment online, but uh, you know, that's, I know the technology isn't there right now for UIA, but I mean, it seems like that that would be something that might be an investment uh, point or a technology uh, point in order to make that happen. I just, I know that uh, just because of the amount of people that I speak to, who maybe don't even have access to the technology, who, you know, are using, um, you know, phones where they're paying by the minute. I know a lot of those people are just used to that human interaction and being able to have somebody in front of them to answer what can be complicated questions for them. So that's overwhelmingly a question I get is why are the offices not open? And I don't have a, I don't have a perfect answer for them. And, and I don't necessarily think the vaccine answer works, but okay, we can agree to disagree on that. Um, 
what you know the reality is is that ui has clearly made a lot of improvements during you know the last 18 months during the pandemic but there are still problems what do you see that still needs to be done or improved upon to help the overall system I do think that we need to do a lot more work in making our um, documents that we send out to people clearer for them to understand, easier for them to understand. We talk in our own language, the UI language, and if you're new to that and don't understand what we're saying about determinations and redeterminations and monetary and non-monetary determinations and stuff, we need to do a much better job of just making people have a clearer sense of what I have to do. Uh, in order to receive benefits. And so we are working on, particularly with our work search documents that people are starting to receive to let them know that we're gonna be turning work search back on on May 30th, um, that we're trying to make it very clear and concise what it is they have to do so that they um, don't lose their benefits for the weeks they're trying to certify for. What would you say is the biggest mistake, and it may just be something that people aren't even thinking about, that that the that the individual is making when they're trying to file? Is there something that's overwhelmingly simple that maybe people just aren't doing right that could prevent a lot of the headache? Yep, sometimes they just don't read the document as closely as they probably should. Um, and so they, they like I said, sometimes they are trying to second guess what it is that you want from them. And, um, you know, so they just need to re read it and be very clear. When they're turning in their ID verification information, they need to make sure that they're signing the uh, second page. We're, we're trying to push it up onto the first page uh, because a lot of people miss that they've got to sign the IDV document. Um, you know, saying that this is me and I'm not lying about it. And then a lot of times um, we don't get very clear um, pictures. You know, you can't see who it is. You can't verify who it is. You can't look there, you know. And so then that slows things down because we have to go back to them and say, you need to resubmit it. And people will say, I've resubmitted it. I've resubmitted it five, 10 times, uh, but they're resubmitting the same bad document, um, you know, that doesn't allow us to see their face, doesn't allow us to see their passport uh, as clearly as we need to, to make the determination about whether or not it's them or somebody trying to commit fraud. So the overwhelming emails I get from people are just people who are banging their heads against the wall that they can't get through for A, B, and C reason, or they haven't been able to get an answer on their claim, that they feel like they filed everything, but weeks have passed. What would you say to those people who I know you hear from and who I hear from, who just are simply at their wits end and frustrated? That we, um, there's always going to be people who are, are waiting their turn because there's people coming into the system every single day. But, um, you know, we do not have a significant backlog on current claims. And so when people say that they are waiting to hear from us, um, you know, we are very current on uh, where those claims are. So if somebody says that they've been waiting months, um, they probably need to get a hold of us again um, because I there's there's got to be something wrong in the system. Well, not in our system. There's got to be something wrong with why they. And sometimes people will say they haven't heard from us, and they have. They just don't like the answer. And so you know, we have to we we deal with that quite often too. You know, and how, about some, how about some insider info from you? Best day to call in. I know that's maybe changed a little bit. Best day to call in. Best time to log on best way to navigate the system best time to call in is usually at the end of the week um so like uh, thursday and friday that we have a cl clearly if we can get to 92 percent of our folks that we're uh, talking to on a friday that means that that's a good time to call in uh and there there's a cadence to it mondays are the worst fridays so uh later in the day usually is much better too um and so uh when people log on um you know the system is available to them um you know from 8 a.m until I think six. Um, so, you know, I think that when they log in, they still, sh they should be able to have access and, and be able to do what they need to do. Uh, now with work search, that's going to add a little to what they have to do. Um, we're going to be sending a press release out on that, I think tomorrow. Um, but we've sent out the first notice to people that they work search is turning on, which means that they have to, um, uh, search for work. They have to file a resume with like My Talent Connect 
Um, they need to um, do a resumating writing class. Uh, they can file for the new Clean Slate program, which would help them uh, access better jobs. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of things that are available to people when they have to start doing their work search, applying for jobs online, applying for them in person, uh, and, but they'll have to give us detailed information on what that work search entails in order for them to be certified and be able to uh, continue receiving their benefits after May 30th. Is, okay, so that, that begins after May 30th. So the mm -hmm. information will go out tomorrow. So we'll probably do a story tomorrow just letting people know this is coming. But yep. starting May 30th, it's no longer how we were during the pandemic. We're just click a button if you're not looking for work right now right. because of. So <clears throat> that's significant though, because essentially that, that comes from the idea that things are opening up now and there's more opportunity for people to interview, to have interaction. Is that essentially what, what that refers yep, and to? to to get ready to to start really looking to clean up their resume to maybe take a, a interviewing class on how to better interview for a job um you know to apply for the clean slate program um to start looking for work um you know there's a lot of classes if they need to uh catch up on um you know uh, a computer program that they think they might be uh, having to use or they haven't used in a while there's lots of classes at the michigan works and other areas um that you can take those kind of you know one day classes uh to just kind of refresh your skills so all of those are things that are available for people to start getting ready to do uh, uh their work search and head back into the workplace the goal, obviously, and the president has said this too, is is to get people back to work. So it's right. it's an opportunity for your agency to say we want to assist you in finding the job rather than having you stay on unemployment. Correct, yeah. while still having unemployment available to them while they're doing that work search. Got it. Anything else that you'd like to share with us, or anything that we can expect coming down the pike that may be beneficial to help people who are having problems, or any changes that are going to be made coming up that we need to be aware of. Um, well, all the things that we're doing are kind of behind the scenes things that will hopefully make it easier for your, your um, viewership uh, as they continue to navigate the, the system. So as we, you know, I think our probably our next big thing will be, you know, when we are uh, ready to reopen the, the local offices uh, at that point, that'll be the next big thing I think that'll be coming down the pike for us. And it'll be in 2021. It will. <laughs> okay. I don't want to call you in January of 2022 and say, what happened? <laughs> well, unless something goes horribly wrong this summer, I'm, uh, I'm confident that we're uh, good to go for this year. Okay. I appreciate your time very much. Thank